On one Monday many years ago, Wendy was at work. Ten minutes to the end of the day, the new receptionist ran to Wendy's desk and told her that she had to take an urgent call. Soon after Wendy picked up the blinking phone line, she knew her life would never be the same. The nightmare started when Wendy Roche got a phone call from the police. In a horrifying moment, she learned her husband, who was in law enforcement, had been arrested. He had been sexually abusing her daughter for the past six years. Devastated at the news, she cried out to God for help as she faced humiliation, homelessness, and even unemployment. In her book, Unbroken, Wendy shares her story of starting over and offers words of hope and comfort for those who are suffering. Wendy Baisley Roche is here with us now. And Wendy, thank you for sharing your story with us today. You had no clue this was going on. No clue at all. You know, there was an unsettledness in yeah. me for a few months before the a phone sense call. That something was wrong. And... That something was wrong, but I thought it was me. Mm -hmm. I actually thought I was going crazy. There was a stirring and an uncomfortableness. And I even went to a counselor yeah. so to was, try to seek help. Was the phone call the first moment that you had a clue about this? I mean, what went through your mind? OK, so, so because I had gone crazy feeling, and mm -hmm. I, there was a moment just weeks prior to this phone call where I literally pulled off to the side of the road and screamed at the top of my lungs, help me, God. You know, I received that phone call. And when the officer told me what had happened, a flashback of just the unsettledness and the craziness that had been going on, and it suddenly made sense. Yeah. But I had no idea it had anything to do with my daughter. How was the abuse discovered by the police? You know, that's the amazing part. I cried out to God, and within a few weeks, an enormous amount of events transpired mm -hmm. that rolled us up to that moment where she actually had the courage and opportunity to tell. Yeah. She was actually traveling out of state with her biological father and her brother and stopped at a girlfriend's house in Texas, mm -hmm. which is where she ended up telling her friend. And her friend told her to tell her mother. And then they were able to talk to her father. You know, people who our perpetrators of this often are very manipulative and know just what to say to a child to make them silent about the abuse. I mean, your daughter had gone through this for like six years and been told by your husband that you would not make it. You would harm yourself or not want to live anymore if she ever came clean with this. Because I think people think, well, why wouldn't a child come forward and say this? But I've heard story after story of this kind of manipulative action taken by the, the person who's the abuser. This, you must have felt so incredibly overwhelmed by all of this. I don't know how you even took it in. You know what? He had her convinced that I would end my life if I knew. And you know what? She had every right to believe that. Because the truth was, I was an insecure woman. Mm -hmm. I'd been through broken marriages. I'd been through uh, the insecurities of never feeling good enough and, and working so that. hard to always mm -hmm. be good enough. Yeah. Matter of fact, in that craziness I spoke of, there was a time where I literally wanted to end my life. Yeah. And there had been times in my childhood where I didn't think I really mattered, or I thought that mm -hmm. maybe life would be better without me. Yeah. And so she had every right to be manipulated that way. And I'm just amazed at her courage. Yeah. You were not a believer at the time. You had cried out to God at the side of the road, but you were not someone who was personally committed to Christ or really practicing a faith walk of any kind. How did this whole scenario for you turn around? Because in the book you recount th just the myriad things that happened to you with the press coming to your door and peeking in your windows and you couldn't go out and the kids couldn't go to school. So much shame involved in it. How did God take what the enemy had meant for evil and begin to turn it around for you? 
Which is the amazing thing. It was all about his love. Yeah. I realized after the phone call and everything just literally being stripped away, as I lay there and contemplated like a movie of the events that brought me up to that moment in my life, yeah. I realized that although everything was stripped away with this phone call, literally, I had no, I didn't have my children with me. I didn't, I ended up losing the house and a job and moving out of the area. But, but I realized that as life was stripping everything away, God was busy rebuilding. And I realized that the events that transpired to actually set up the appointment for her to be able to tell, that was God orchestrating and answering my cry for help. I suspected that, but then soon after, day after day as the book unfolds, the stories and the events that transpired that are so numerous, I would cry out to God and I would hear Him and I would feel His presence and he would open doors I never could have opened. Mm -hmm. But the process was so long. I mean, you had to endure. I think about having to, after you'd moved with your children and reestablished and begun to start a new life over, you had to come back for the court scenario. I mean, just facing those things was incredibly difficult. You know, one of the first things I learned, and the court date reminds me of this, is I had so much forgiveness to give to myself besides the perpetrator. Yeah. I had a lot of regret and guilt, and how could I have not known yeah. that my daughter was suffering? Um, the agony that a parent goes through is just, oh, it well, was so enormous. And then walking your children through this whole life-impacting process, it also brought you to a place of forgiveness with your own mom. It did. Yeah. You know, I realized that as I saw God unfold and rebuild our life and answer my cries for help, He, he was loving me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, but I didn't do anything to deserve that love. Yeah. If He could love me when I didn't deserve it, perhaps I could love someone else who I didn't think deserved it. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing I learned about the forgiveness was forgiving someone doesn't mean that what happened was okay. And I used to think it was all the same. If you said, I forgive you, that means it's okay, we're good, we're good yeah. <laughs> it's over. But I realized that's not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I could forgive the person, meaning I could let go of the bound up, tied up, not that I wanted to just say, you owe me for this and, yeah. and the anger. I could rip that IOU note up and I could say, you know, what happened was not okay. It can never be okay, but I'm letting go mm -hmm. of you owing me for this. And I'm laying it at the cross and I'm giving it to Jesus, the one who died on the cross for me, who was broken for me and who forgives me. Yeah. I'm going to do the same. It's a remarkable story. I just want to say the book is called Unbroken and a true story of hope in starting over. And who doesn't want to hear that message? It's available <laughs> in stores nationwide. If you've been yourself in a similar situation, let me say, if you need help, if you need prayer, we'd love for you to give us a call. Our number is toll free and someone on the other end will be there to talk with you and to pray with you. The number is 1-800-700-7000. The book is called Unbroken and our guest has been Wendy Baisley Roche. Wendy, thank you so much for your candor and for being with us today. Thank you for this so opportunity nice to, to share God's love. Amen. <laughs>